The book that I'm reviewing today is Edge of Eternity by Ken Follett, the third part of the Century series, which started with Fall of Giants and Winter of the World. Over the course of this book, which is set between 1961 and 1989, five different characters who are considered the main characters of the book um, develop their lives, really. And it's about how the history, in some ways, affects their lives. Now, the first character is a woman called Rebecca Hoffman, who lives in East, in, lives in East Berlin in 1961. 1961 was when the novel starts, and in fact, Rebecca is the first character who's introduced to us. And she tries to escape from East Berlin, obviously but through the Berlin Wall, as it is constructed just to the point she starts to want to escape. There is also Wally Frank, who is Rebecca's brother, who is also an extremely important character, who also wants to leave East Berlin and he wants to go to the West where there is money and he can develop his talents as a singer. The third character is George Jakes, who's a young lawyer in the civil rights movement. And over the course of the book, we see him develop from effectively just a man who is involved in the civil rights movement to becoming one of the key presidential aides in the next, well, between 1961 and 1989. Now, there is also um, Tanya, who is a reporter in Russia. She is working for TASS, or should I say the USSR? And she does a lot of anti-communist propaganda. Which she's heavily involved in it. And... Her friend, who is also involved in it, gets sent to a prison camp and she only herself narrowly avoids it. She is kind of the reporter of the book and she is the character who moves around an awful, awful lot. Her brother, Dimka, is one of the aides in the Kremlin. He's also quite a political character along with George. And while well, George, we see the Cold War through the American eyes. Um, with Dimka, we see it through the eyes of the USSR and the top aides there which kind of provides two very good contrasts on particular situations, for example, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, the book does obviously cross about 20, 20, 30 years of history. And as a result, it is a very long book. It is 1,100 pages. But in my opinion, it's certainly worth the read. I mean, all the characters have great storylines. They all do very, very different things with their lives. I mean, Wally goes on. I'm not going to give too much away, obviously, because I want you to read the book and not know everything. Wally becomes a singer, if you like. Rebecca just tries to deal with her life as a result of the war and tries to campaign for it to go down. Also, there's also a massive variety in scenery, um, locations ranging from, well, America to Britain to East Berlin, Munich, Russia, Vietnam. And the other great thing about the characters is, although there are only five major ones who are listed on the blurb of the book, there are also many other characters who are of equal importance. Characters such as Natalia, for one, Nina, and also Maria, who I'm sure you will all get to know once you read the book. Now, it also takes you to a number of different locations, which I think I've already said about Vietnam and that kind of thing. And as a result, you meet various historical characters, like um, you meet Khrushchev, you meet George Bush, you meet... Oh, God, who else do you meet? You, um, you even hear of some characters like Ardener and that kind of thing, who was one of the... I think he's the first Chancellor of West Germany, who are... Although Ardener, for example, isn't isn't really in the book, he's more mentioned. People like Khrushchev are quite important in the um, novel. Uh, the emotion of the characters is also very important in the book. It kind of gives a sense of how people felt in different countries about various things. Um, for example, Rebecca and Wally are very, very anti the Berlin Wall. And this was something that was um, echoed in the sentiment of German people across the Cold War, really. And that's one of the great geniuses of Follett's writing in this book. He uses these characters to try and emphasise what is going on uh, in the world and also what people thought at the time. Follett, to a certain extent, has actually quite a difficult job because he is trying to write a history book within living memory. So as a result, people obviously differ. I mean, some people find bits, that, some people find things that other people don't like very good. So he's done quite well to try and balance it, in my opinion. He's also a very good writer. He very he emphasises the tension of the Cuban Missile Crisis particularly well, in fact. And during that point in the book, which is only about 200, 300 pages in, um, 
he gives it a lot of emotion and you really get a sense of how much people thought this was the end of the world. Um, the other probably big example of this, in my opinion, is the fall of the Berlin Wall, which is incredibly emotional for most of the characters. And it gives you a real sense of just how close, in fact, how clo- yeah, how close the USSR were to collapsing. And I think that is one reason why the book is so brilliant is because these historical events are put through a human perspective and that is what makes them so great. Although the book in itself is also very depressing because it's set during the Cold War and everybody's afraid the Russian and American are going to nuke each other, um, there is certain amounts of human brilliance involved, particularly due to Wally and Dave, who you will meet if you read the book, and the, um, the amazing stage presence of, shall we just say, Plum Nelly, who are excellent and by far my favourite part of the book. The entire Plum Nelly sub- subplot is my favourite, second only to probably Rebecca and what she gets up to. This is a book that I would advise people read if you get the chance. It is a long book, so do persevere with it. Of course, if you have an interest in history, I think this book is perfect for you and the other two, in fact. And the other thing is, beware, this is an adult book, obviously. And so just have that as a note of caution if you do decide to read it. Thank you very much for listening.